Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here with a quick look at some key topics that might well be a focus for the 2024 A-level exams. I've chosen topics here for the UK economy. I'll do a similar video for micro and maybe an overarching synoptic video, including international topics. My first topic is the combination of interest rates and inflation. You can see here a big rise in UK interest rates shown by the black line, this steep rise in inflation in the UK. So exam questions might focus on the economic impact of higher interest rates, both here in the UK and other countries. How do high interest rates help to control inflation? What's the theory? What's the evidence? What are the limits of using this policy, this monetary policy tightening? Because there are many factors affecting inflation, not just the rate of interest. And in particular now, what's causing disinflation? You can see in the UK, follow the blue line there, that the rate of inflation is falling quite sharply. Uh, and it's now actually below the level of policy interest rates. So that's a bit of an interesting topic here. What's going to happen interest rates in 2024? Will inflation keep falling? Linked with that, of course, is the rise in inflation in other countries. So the cost of living crisis was clearly the dominant economic issue, well, over the last two years, really. Uh, what are the effects of accelerating inflation? What are the economic and social costs? Why are some countries more exposed than others to external shocks, such as volatile commodity prices? And although most countries are now suffering disinflation, or experiencing disinflation, look at China the black line at the bottom on the chart. So will a slowing Chinese economy experience price deflation? And what are the risks of deflation to a country such as China? My next topic is migration. Now, this chart shows the figures for long-term migration into the UK. People have stayed in the UK for at least 12 months. The grey line is the key one, I guess. It's net migration, which is the difference between the blue and the black line there. So what are some of the causes and the effects of the significant rise in net migration into the UK? Uh, to what extent is a high level of migration helpful on a sort of supply and demand side basis to help the UK achieve their key macro objectives? And to what extent has Brexit changed the pattern of migration both into and out of the UK economy? Please do follow the migration topic carefully does appear specifically on certain uh, exam board specs and it's something we look at very closely and follow in uh, in our economic coverage at Tutor Due. The housing market is also probably worth looking at. Are we reaching a turning point here? We know that house prices, having risen for many, many years, fell by 2% in 2023. And uh, well, the question is, well, how might falling house prices affect aggregate demand? How might they affect economic growth? And in particular, would a sustained fall, which is unlikely, but we've had it in the past, as you see on the chart, would a sustained fall in property prices actually help the UK economy over the medium term? What about the labour market? Well, unemployment hasn't really, it's the kind of, it's the, the topic that hasn't really taken off yet. Unemployment is pretty low, 4, 4.5% four of the labour force. People are expecting it to rise in 2024, but it hasn't really increased significantly. Uh, but if we look beneath the data, one of the big stories of the last two years has been a very sharp rise shown here in economic inactivity due to long term sickness. People of working age who are not actively looking for work. So what's caused this and what is the potential impact of more than uh, well, over half a million extra people who are inactive due to long term sickness and illness? What's the impact on the UK's macro objectives. My next topic is tax. Now this chart shows the tax burden, which is all taxes taken together, direct and indirect. All the tax revenue is expressed as a share of GDP. It takes us all back to the 20th century. You can see here that the tax burden has risen substantially. It's now at a 70 year high. Lots of reasons before behind this. The government's frozen the income tax allowances. It's called fiscal drag. And that's dragging in tens of billions of extra money into the exchequer. The government's increased corporation tax from 19 to 25%. So what are the economic effects of a very high tax burden? What are the demand and supply side consequences of that? Productivity is my next topic. Now, historically, labour productivity output per person 
uh, per hour worked has grown by about 2% a year. But as you can see, since 2008, since the recession, the trajectory, the trend growth of productivity has certainly flattened. Productivity growth is growing by about less than half a percent per year. Now, it's really important for productivity to grow, to make the UK more competitive and to improve living standards. So why has productivity growth stagnated? This is a topic has appeared on exams in the past, could well appear again. Which demand and supply side policies are being used, might be used and are they working? Productivity growth is a kind of big barrier at the moment to our living standards. Fiscal policy, we've mentioned tax, but what about how much the government is borrowing? So last year, the UK budget deficit or fiscal deficit, same thing, was about £137 billion, which was 5.5% of GDP, as you can see. Uh, it's about £2,000 per head of the population. So the government borrowing huge sums yet again. Now, the deficit is forecast to fall, but it'll still be over 3% of GDP. The economics here, should the UK government be aiming to cut the deficit so quickly? Is the government right, is Sunak right to have cutting the debt as one of his objectives? What are the arguments for and against increasing borrowing to help fund green investment, for example? These are all major topical, topical issues. Follow them in the news and have great fun with your macroeconomics. And I guess, uh, yeah, this is my last one, my last topic. So I've chosen 10 topics. This is my long shot, OK, AI, artificial, in artificial intelligence. The AI technologies, we can find them in so many applications, virtual assistants, search engines, navigation software, online banking, etc., facial recognition. So this is this is the one of the kind of long-term burning stories, isn't it? What impact might both the adoption and deployment of AI have for the labour market in particular? Will it help to improve sustainable trend growth? My chart here is from 2022, it's from IBM. It's the rate of adoption in businesses and in selected countries. So globally, 42% uh, of businesses are exploring AI. 34 have deployed it. Uh, in China, that's 30% and 58 The United Kingdom a little bit behind other countries in terms of deployment of AI. Uh, let's see what happens in the years to come. But certainly think about the economics of AI and try to bring it into as many economic topics and policy questions as you can. Now, join 2024 as we head all the way through January through the mocks towards February, March, April, May. We'll be covering all of these topics and more, our daily blogs, our Instagram posts. We're also spending a lot of time preparing for our grade booster courses, which kick off in March and April, where we're travelling the country, uh, hundreds, thousands of students coming to these courses. If you want an intensive day of revision for your exam board, then click the uh, QR code there for some full details of our Grade Booster course offering economics help as the 2024 exams come into focus. There we go. I'll do a special one for micro. I'll try and choose 10 micro topics. Hopefully you found this uh, video useful. Please leave a comment in the comments box. I'll try and get back to you. Uh, like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos as we head into 2024. Take care, stay positive, stay curious and see you sometime soon.